Hello everyone, welcome to Tector.com. In this video, we will be learning SQL. So basically, we will start learning SQL and we will have an overview of what we are learning, going to learn in subsequent videos. So we started query languages, learning qu about query language with relational algebra. Okay, so we started with relational algebra. Then we studied relational calculus. Fine. In relational calculus, we studied two types. That is one was tuple relational calculus. Okay. And another one is domain relational calculus. Fine. So relational algebra was this, this one relational algebra was procedural language, right? So it was procedural in nature. while domain relational calculus is non-procedural, right? These are non-procedural. So one obvious question is that when I say procedural and non-procedural, what does it mean? Right? So when I say procedural, it means order of operations matters. Okay? So this is order of operation okay, matters. While in non-procedural languages, there is a level of abstraction, okay, uh, I mean it is basically specification that what I need in output in form of some logical uh, expressions, okay, but here the order of operation doesn't matter, okay, so, so these two are basically formal languages, okay, formal query languages, formal query languages fine so these things we have studied now we are going to study structured query language okay that is SQL and SQL is basically special purpose programming language special purpose programming language designed for managing data stored in a relational database management system okay so I'll write it down so when I'm saying special purpose programming language special purpose programming language it means it has special purpose and what is the purpose the purpose is to store okay retrieve update delete manipulate and so on so basically all these tasks are basically to manage okay so what I, in one word we can say manage okay so manage fine so the purpose of sql is to manage data stored in rdbms this is important okay it can manage and i mean it can manage data only in rdbms relational database management system okay so this is the formal definition of sql now sql is basically a standard okay so when sql was initially uh, designed by IBM it was supposed to be a query language and it was a great success for IBM but when later on more companies came into picture SQL became a standard okay so what do I mean when I'm saying standard standard means IBM came with SQL another company started coming on the SQL thing now if they all started creating their own SQL own query writing style then it will become a difficulty for the employee or the users okay who is going to program on SQL fine so then everyone agreed upon this thing that is making SQL a standard and then all companies can build upon it okay so if a company X is coming up with um, some SQL programming language then what he will do is they will have some basic component okay so this basic component will be universally same for all XYZ companies okay but they can also have some advanced component for example Oracle has PLSQL so over SQL you can also program okay so these things are 
while in mysql you cannot program it's purely query based system uh, as far as i have used maybe it can have some plugin or some extension so that i don't know well so this this is what i mean by saying standard fine so whichever company comes with sql programming language there will be some basic component of sql okay so let's understand what i'm what i mean by saying basic component so the first component is ddl that is data definition language okay so here we define the schema so this component is responsible for defining schema defining defining constraint over schema okay. so what are the example i mean in basic sql what are the commands which comes under ddl so that is create then this is create so to you uh, create a schema or table what do we use create fine alter then drop and rename okay so this is these are the commands we will be learning each of them in detail so these are the commands which is used to define the schema and alter the schema drop the schema okay and rename the schema fine so this is basically definition data definition language so as you can see these commands work on table right now what do we do to insert data so using this we can create a uh, table but to insert we use dml okay so first is uh, inserting data updating data deleting data so all these are the part of data manipulation language so one important question comes is what is the kind or component under which select comes okay so select as name suggests like i'm retrieving just retrieving the data and manipulation is like i'm modifying the data right so students get confused like select may not be under this thing data manipulation okay i mean if you want to guess you may go wrong so this is where select comes data under data manipulation language similarly we also have other commands like insert update then delete so these all comes under dml fine now we have data control language so as name suggest control this is data control i mean uh, i'm not writing it in detail due to lack of space i'll be sharing notes with this lecture so you can go through the notes for detailed things fine so this is data control language as name suggest it controls the data okay it specifies the control so basically it is responsible for control to access and authorization okay so basically uh, access and authorize or i should say or authorization fine so basically we control access so the commands under this kind of uh, component or this component is grant so this is used to grant permission okay and then revoke so revoke is whatever permission i have given i can revoke it i can get it back the next component is embedded sql or dy dynamic sql okay so sql is a special purpose programming language right we we use it to store retrieve i mean to manage the data right but what is the use i mean how we can how we are going to use this so what do we do basically we have some scripting language like let's say i'll take php because i work on php fine so what do we do inside php we write sql okay embed means what we all now know that we used to i mean we used to embed youtube videos or iframes 
okay so embedding is like inside something you are going to embed a part okay this is embedded fine so now the entire programming is done in PHP and whenever data is required we embed SQL code inside okay so that is called embedding okay so in SQL in standard SQL programming language we should also have the flexibility or uh, way or mechanism to embed it under some other programming language okay for example in PHP first we create a handle okay so that handle is created using the connection thing I mean uh, by specifying all the uh, connection string that is username password server etc and then every time whenever I have to make some query you we use that query handle okay so that is done inside PHP other programming languages also work like this in Java also we have JDBC connector so this is fine now the finally we have transaction control so multiple transactions will be I mean SQL is supposed to have this thing transaction control so let's say on this relational table multiple transaction multiple users are making transaction okay maybe together or one by one so we should have a mechanism to control the transaction okay so that no inconsistency is created among data okay so this is how transaction is managed uh, let me write fine so transaction control component of SQL specifies how transaction will be managed fine so this was all about the overview of SQL now in next lecture what we will do is we will install a database okay uh, in your local machine so that whenever we learn something you can do direct practice on it okay so I'll be providing a um, database dump okay and depending upon your operating system you, you will install MySQL fine so we'll be doing practice on MySQL with the data which I'll provide you so enough for this lecture hope to see you in the next lecture thanks for watching